Hi everyone, this is Cynthia, the Audio Bell, and here with me I have Joyzy. I just adopted Joyzy this Christmas, <laughs> and she's become one of my audio dogs. When I was adopting her, filling out the adoption papers, I asked Joyzy, Joyzy, do you like Magnapans? And she wagged her tail in approval, so I thought, okay, well, I'll take her home and see what she thinks. And as it turns out, she loves my audio file system. It's funny because all of my dogs do. They love to sit in front of it while I'm listening to the music. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So today I'm going to be interviewing my longtime friend, Mike. He's been an audiophile for over 40 years. I'm going to ask him some pressing questions and I'm going to see how he thinks on his feet. Hi everyone, this is Cynthia, the Audio Bell, and I am here with my longtime friend Mike Austin. Mike has lived a very colorful life. He has been in the military, he has two college degrees, he's traveled the world backpacking in Central and South America, as well as lecturing for 10 years in Argentina in economics. Most of his life he calls himself an audiophile, and I'm going to ask him why. Audiophile just means a lover of sound. Now when you say audiophile, you don't mean just that, you mean a lover of high-end sound. What does that mean? You appreciate the beauty and, and of esoteric music produced accurately. With the, the idea of an audiophile is to bring the live music into your home, and that's why they like it. So, I've seen a lot of people that will say that they are audiophiles, but I'm not so sure. Like, what do you, what do you think constitutes an audiophile? An audiophile is a lover of a lover of the music, and so you arrange your life around your passion. It's like a bibliophile, a lover of books. You arrange your life around books. You have a lot of books. I'm also that, and I have, you'll see later, a thousand, about a thousand books, history, and so on. But an audiophile would arrange his, his life around that to explore and to enjoy his passion. Otherwise, no, I, I met this guy some years ago. He said he was an audiophile, went over to his house. He, his system was fine, uh, but it was in a corner, it was pointing at another wall, there was no listening area. And so you could, he kind of listened to it just as it was washing dishes or something. I said, why don't you move the speakers out in the room? Why don't you do this? He goes, I can't because my wife told me I could and I can't do that. Well, okay then. <laughs> what do you say to that? So would you say he was an audiophile? No, he isn't. He's a hand-packed husband. <laughs> okay, so on that subject, I know that you must have had a lot of women in your life. Would you say that they liked your audio system, or what, what did they think about it? Well, some liked it, some didn't. Very few of them appreciated for what it is. A uh, few of them complained about it, and they're not here, and the audio system is still here. <laughs> I do see that the audio system is here. <laughs> so, I have a few questions. What got you into audio in well, the first When I was in grade school, the big thing then was little AM radio. Transistors had just come out, little Japanese AM radio. Everybody ran around with it, listening to the top 50 and memorizing the hits and so on. And gradually, uh, I had a, I could afford a little, looked like a little suitcase, a little turntable to pull down. You'd stack records on it, 45s and so on. Uh, then I, ha I was drafted, so I joined the uh, military. And uh, in the in the ba and the base, you could buy reasonable audio file gear. So I had that. And, uh, of course, when I got out, I saved a great deal of money, so that's when I first I got my first audio, real audio file system that would sound great today. Infinity 2000B speakers, Marantz 2325 receiver, and my favorite piece of audio gear in the history of the universe, a Harman Kardon Rabco SD7 linear tracking interior. Oh, my gosh, I wish I still had it. Oh, my. Why, why don't you still have it? The, it, it's finicky. It's like a very beautiful woman. Uh, they're very, they're, they're very uh, costly and um, inefficient, and you have to spend a lot of time with them to make them happy. And it just got to the point where it wasn't working anymore. So it was high maintenance. High maintenance, yes. <laughs> okay, so it was high maintenance. So what do you have now for your turntable? I have a uh, Riga. It's a, a Riga Planer 6 or a P6, whatever they call them now. It's a decent, uh, decent turntable. It's above the introductory level and right, right below what I would consider, you know, a very esoteric gear. But it's good. The uh, cartridge is an exact two cartridge. It's fine. Works well. I'm going to update the cartridge uh, in about a year or so. But right now, it's beautiful. Works fine. What do you want to update it to? Uh, probably a Dino Vector. I think that's the name of it. Uh, but uh, we can go into that some other time. Yeah. Okay. So what else do you have in your audio system? Well, I've got uh, 
I have the dream gear for a lot of people. I have uh, four monoblock amplifiers, solid state, uh, Emotiva, and they uh, are all the same. And I buy amp each of my Magnapain speakers. So I buy amp them through a crossover because the Magnapains, they have an external crossover, but it's, you know, it's okay. So I just took that away <laughs> and got my own crossover. Rather inexpensive uh, Behringer crossover Super X Pro works fine. And so I have about a thousand watts into four ohms going into each speaker. It's astounding. Best system I've ever heard in my life. And I've heard quite a few. I've been around a bit. So it's an active crossover. It is. Okay. That's very cool. So, your Magnapans, what type of Magnapans do you have? These are Maggie's uh, 3.3s. I got in the Magnapans when I was, gosh, in my 20s. I used to visit an audio star, store in Portland, Oregon called Hawthorne Stereo. It's not there anymore. And uh, when I saw the, the Magnapans, I thought, what, what, what's this? And I already had had, had the Infinity 2000Bs. I had to sell them to go to Africa and the Middle East. But uh, when I heard the Maggie's, I thought, oh my gosh, this is a whole new world of things. I thought, I think they're MMGs or something like that. It'll, things like that and uh, since then I've been in May I've had every single Magnapan uh, that they made up until the three threes I got these three threes used in Argentina about 20 years ago and so um, I shipped them up here when I moved from Argentina I had them refurbished in uh, Magnapan and uh, man they're astounding they're just better than new they sound lovely don't oh, they they're astounding <laughs> not as lovely you Cynthia Bishop but very lovely speakers <laughs> So as for your source components, do you use tube or a solid state? Well, I have a tube uh, preamplifier. Uh, it's not Black Ice Audio, it's uh, Jolita, which mm -hmm. Jolita and Black Ice are similar. I don't know how that's working out for them now. But the Fusion preamp is <laughs> beautiful, four tubes. And uh, for my phono, phono preamp, I have also a Black Ice Audio four tube. Maybe it's two tube, I don't know. It's right behind me. Uh, preamp. I love tubes. Just adore them. Okay, so I have to ask then, you like tubes, but solid state has better bass response, so do you like sloppy bass? Well, <laughs> nobody likes sloppy bass. It doesn't matter if you like tubes or solid state. Tubes don't give sloppy bass. They give bass. They give accurate bass. Let's say stand-up bass versus an electric bass. Uh, stand-up bass is what I prefer. Magnapans are perfect for that. Tubes go and Magnapans go together perfectly. Uh, so that's what I prefer. And the solid state amps, I, I love them. I have them. Um, but they don't they give a nice punchy bass, but um, tubes give a more mellow sound That's the word that's always used with tubes. They're more mellow. mellow. So they're mellow. I just like tubes. So what do you define a stand-up bass then? What a stand-up bass? Acoustic bass. Acoustic bass. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that answers my question. So We're gonna take a look at his system. We're gonna look at each one of his components and he's going to describe them um, Before we do that I did want to ask one more question. So, are you a vinyl guy or are you a digital guy? Vinyl. But why are you a vinyl guy when vinyl has so many flaws? Everything in the world has flaws. Nothing is perfect. And so, when vinyl has its uh, strengths and weaknesses, as does CD, I, CDs. I've heard them, a compact disc, I've heard them described this way once a long time ago. Maybe it was Harper's Magazine. Described vinyl as, as uh, imperfect perfection and CDs as perfect imperfection. Or maybe it was reversed. It doesn't matter. But you're going to have uh, pluses and minuses with all of it. A vinyl is called analog. Analog is weak. It means copy. That's exactly what it is. The, when, when they're made, it's an exact copy of the sound wave going into the, to the vinyl roof or copper, whatever they use. Uh, so it's not ones and zeros and all this stuff. No, it's the exact copy. So it uses friction to reproduce that. Sure, it has flaws, but so what? Everything has flaws. I have flaws. I don't, I'm not going to tell you what they are when I have them. <laughs> I think one of them must be that glass of wine I see over there. Uh, there are two, uh, Miss Bishop. One is for you. Oh, okay. Well, let's get to showing your system to the audience. That way I can have that glass of wine. Let's do so. All right. Okay, Mike, so let's take a look at your system. Let's do. So what do we have here? What we have here is a culmination of 60, well, 50-some years of being an audiophile. And you accumulate stuff over time, you get rid of it. All audio files do the exact same thing. They always have a dream system in mind. I was very fortunate in my life that I was able to put together a system that to my mind is a dream, dream system. I can't imagine uh, being in a position where I'd want to go up and up and up and spend until the limit of diminishing returns. It's probably there already, but I'm ha very happy, very content with what I have. Like I told you before, <coughs> excuse me, it's the uh, best sound system I've ever heard, period, full stop. So do you think that you need to put a lot of money into it to have great sound? <laughs> Excuse me. Like any passion, you're going to have to put money in it. 
if you're like tennis, you're gonna have to buy a tennis racket. If you get professional ever, you're gonna spend hundreds of dollars and, and all kinds of things for it. So yeah, you gotta spend money on it. Uh, this um, is, I, I would bet $25,000, I think, oh, wow. about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I'm, I was a teacher, I'm retired, I'm going to retire in a few weeks. But on a teacher's salary yet, I could, I could do this. You have to make, you have to make uh, sacrifices. You have to do that. You can't have two houses, a Jeep, a motorcycle. You can't do that if you're a teacher and afford audio gear. This is my passion. This is what I do. This is what I want to have. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at my apartment, the whole thing is centered around music, music and uh, books. Have you had to sacrifice anything? A great deal of things, but I don't care about them. I care about my auto system. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at your Maggie's right here. They're, they're so large and they're just beautiful, I have to say. They're stunning. They originally had black here, but when I had them refurbished in Maggie Bay, maybe four years ago, I had the white put on. They fit nicely and they sound, like I said, gorgeous. And they're about 20, 25, 25 years old or so. Um, they stay, <laughs> they sound astounding. They still sound great. They do. If you show your uh, camera down here, the cabling for the speakers. Sure. That what you're going to see here is 10 AWG cable, the speaker cable. You get it at uh, um, in bulk at Lowe's or anywhere really. Uh, that there are speaker cables that sell for a whatever a thousand dollars a foot. What is ridiculous? Come on, just get get a nice cable. 10 is what you need for audiophile system. I would not go thinner than that. A uh, 10 is heavy and. Uh, performs marvelously. So you think cable from Lowe's will sound better than like thousand no dollar cable? No question about it. Listen, put it this way. It's not wasting money. You're way past the diminishing returns, as I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. We're spending all that money. You don't need that. And, but we're not talking about cables, interconnects or the digital cable from your DAC to your, from the transport to the DAC. We're talking just about speaker cables. So you don't really need anything exotic. Waste of money. Okay. So let's go over here and take a look at the rest of your system. So let's start over here with your turntable, Mike. What do we have? RP6 rig up, decent thing, uh, equivalent maybe to the Scout, the VPI, uh, another good company for turntables. Um, decent cartridge, exact too, as I mentioned before. Uh, if you'll notice the record mat, it's, uh, they, I, I believe in the, the philosophy of Rega. They don't like rec record clamps because they want the, the, turn, the record to be floating a little bit above the platter and this sort of record mat this uh, I think it's a music hall mat with the little cork things enables the record to sit as much as possible off the mat itself and uh, that's what I prefer okay and let's go over here to your phono preamp what what is this well it's a uh, black ice audio or Julita I'm not sure how they're going to arrange that uh, two companies one company I don't know but it's a fusion f159 designed by Jim Fosgate if you're an audiophile you know who he is it is of course tube there are a couple tubes in there beautiful piece of gear I used to have a project little tiny project tube preamp it's good but once I replaced it a few months ago with this <laughs> the difference was extraordinary mm -hmm. okay and let's go over to your digital components I've got uh, separate uh, components to transport the DAC. It's a Cambridge Audio Transport. Decent. Does the job it's supposed to do. It feeds into a digital uh, cable which connects with the DAC down below. This is a Project Box DAC. Digital cable is a uh, AudioQuest, uh, what is it, Carbon? I think I used to have a uh, less expensive AudioQuest uh, digital cable. Uh, when I replaced it with this one, which is, you know, it's, it's expensive. The sound, uh, the sound improvement was, was crazy. And that's the thing about improving your audio. If you uh, bring, bring home a component, if you can't tell the difference, take it back. If you can, keep it. It's a simple rule of thumb. Boy, could I tell the difference with this different cable. So, yeah, try it out. Yeah, I remember that with, when you had that old cable. It just... It sounded so different when you put the new one Heavens in. Heavens to Murgatory. Now to the right of the Project Box deck, you will find a power supply. I'm a believer that power supply should be separate from the main uh, tool. But, you know, it's a matter of taste. Less distortion, what have you. Okay. And let's look at your preamplifier. A Jolita preamp, four tubes, marvelous piece of gear. I've had it updated. Better tubes, better capacitors and caps. Uh, I would... I, I wouldn't get rid of this at all. The Jolita, uh, the company makes excellent audiophile gear for a very reasonable price. And I like the company a great deal. I like them too. I have a couple of their components. So, this is your crossover? It is. A very, very simple one. Behringer a Super X Pro. You, I spent about $180, $200 on it. You can spend $8,000 on a Bryston or a Marshawn. Why? 
<laughs> Again, you're, you're reaching the limit where you spend a ton more money and you get a little tiny improvement that may not even be audible. And this works beautifully. And this is what I recommend. If you're going to buy amp um, and you need a crossover, start with this. If it doesn't serve you, step up. I don't know what you would get, but uh, start with this. Okay, and which amplifiers are we bi-amping? We uh, are bi-amping four Emotivas, uh, 500 watts each into four ohms, and monoblocks, of course, and uh, great monoblocks. I wish the Emotiva doesn't make them anymore, and I argued with them, saying, why don't you make them anymore? And they said no, so, okay. So I managed, I bought two of them new, and then I managed to acquire two used ones uh, recently. So now I have the, the Audio Files Dream of four monoblocks. Uh, and by amplification, so I'm I'm happy. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, and, and th these are class A and or class A B switchable well, to A. Got a class A amps. Uh, they're hideously expensive, and do they sound good? Well, of course they do. We just spend thousands of dollars on them. Uh, so I have it, and if you if you put it on class A, that it gets very very hot, and it it even switches after maybe 65 watts into four ohms. So why do it? Just put it in A B, and you have a great sound. They run cool. And, uh, well, they are cool, and they sound awesome. <laughs> Look into the back of my mag is the last thing, I guess. You'll see how I have them hooked up here. MagnaPen, the three threes anyway, have the ability to buy amp right out of the box. I got rid of the, well, I stored away the external crossover supplied by the three threes, and uh, have replaced them with this. And so, hey, I'm good. Works okay. well, sounds great. Let's go take a look at your vinyl in your CD collection. I have about a thousand uh, vinyl records. Almost all of them are classic. I used to work at a record store in Portland, Oregon. and acquired a great deal as everybody was switching to CDs. I uh, bought a bunch of albums that were called cutouts, meaning they were no longer made. And so I, my record collection, which if I had bought it new, would probably cost around, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. I got for much less than that. So I'm very happy with it. All kinds of records. You have a lot of records. I do. Most of them are classical? Yes, I have a section for uh, modern music, uh, popular music, and so on. Uh, it's not as big, of course, but it's, it's substantial. It's okay. Nice. Okay. Let's take a look at your CDs. Let's do. I have enough. Uh, I don't know how many, 600, something like that. Uh, one thing I do like, I like this company, uh, uh, Putumayo. Putumayo.com, look them up. And their stuff is world music. And this is just one I took at random. And the music is, some of it is near audiophile. Most of it is near audiophile quality. Some of it is audiophile type uh, quality. It's not quite Chesky, but it's getting up there. And all types of music. Music from every single continent except Antarctica. Who wants to hear a bunch of penguin squawk? So, <laughs> uh, I recommend the company. And uh, there it is. All kinds of stuff. Okay. Well, I'm eyeing that glass of wine again so i think that we should uh wrap up so we can have that let's do so all right thank you mike thank you miss bishop